Hello everyone, welcome back. And today's video was actually requested by a viewer who goes by the name of Luis or Luis Rojas. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. And they asked if I could make a video talking about the differences between the ISTJ and the ESTJ and how to tell them apart. So here we are. Before we get into the video, I do have one brief announcement, and that is that I am launching a single tier membership for this channel. So if you'd like to support this channel, it's only going to be $3 a month, and it'll simply put a badge next to your name. You'll get access to maybe a couple of polls that I'll do asking for videos that I'm going to do in the future, things like that. And you'll get access to a few extra emojis that you can use here on the channel. But it's just something that says, hey, I want to support the channel and support me as a content creator. So if you decide to become a member, thank you. Let's get into the video. So just like the other how to tell apart the types videos that I've done in the past few weeks and months, this video is not intended for people who are absolute beginners to MBTI and you're going to need a knowledge of cognitive functions and what those are in terms of Jungian personality. So if you're unfamiliar with cognitive functions and maybe you'd like to learn more, maybe go read up on those in books like Gifts Differing or you can check out my course MBTI Zero to Proficient at my website chrisgpsych.com where I take you through the beginner aspects of MBTI all the way up through cognitive functions. But today you're going to need a knowledge of a little bit of cognitive functions so you can really understand the nuanced differences between the ISTJ and ESTJ personality types. So the ESTJ and the ISTJ, what do they share in common and what are their differences? Well, what they do share in common is all of their cognitive functions. Essentially, the ESTJ and ISTJ both have extroverted thinking, introverted sensing, extroverted intuition, and introverted feeling. The difference is going to be that the ESTJ leads with extroverted thinking and has secondary introverted sensing, while the ISTJ is the opposite and they lead with introverted sensing and have secondary extroverted thinking. So why is this important? How does this really differentiate the two? Well, we need to look at rational versus irrational functions to really determine what this means. Now, in Jung's terms, a rational function, which is going to be thinking or feeling, is a function that prefers to come to rational conclusions when interacting with new information as quickly as possible, while irrational functions, intuition and sensing, are going to be functions that much prefer to just kind of take in information or observe things before coming to conclusions, and they don't really like to rush to conclusions as quickly. Rational functions also tend to be better at giving you the rationale as to why they are doing something. I like this thing because it is important to me because, while the irrational functions tend to struggle a little bit more to give that sort of reasoning. So what does this mean for these two types? Well, it means that the ESTJ leads with a rational function, extroverted thinking, and the ISTJ leads with an irrational function, introverted sensing. And therefore, the ESTJ is going to be far more decided on average than the ISTJ because they're going to be interacting with new information in such a way that as they come across it, they're generally going to try and categorize it and make rational conclusions as quickly as possible. While the ISTJ on the other hand is typically going to prefer to kind of take in information, process it for a little bit, and then make conclusions about it. Now this is why the ESTJ tends to end up in more so like leadership or management style positions while the ISTJ usually ends up in more kind of advisory roles where they have time to process and think over the things that they are going to be interacting with. One of the ways that you can look about this is that they both have the J at the end of their personality type but in reality the ISTJ is a perceiving dominant type and the ESTJ is the true judging type because they lead with extroverted thinking which is a judging function while the ISTJ leads with introverted sensing which is a perceiving function. The reason they have that J is because extroverted thinking or their extroverted judging function is still in the top two of their function stack over an introverted judging function or an extroverted perceiving function which means that they prefer to shape and judge their external environment, but the difference is that the ESTJ does this first and foremost while the ISTJ processes information for a little bit, sits on it, and then will come to those sort of conclusions afterwards. So now let's go through each of the functions for both of these types and see how they differ depending on the spot they are in within the personality type. So first and foremost is going to be extroverted thinking versus introverted sensing as the dominant function for each of these two types. So the ESTJs leading with extroverted thinking tend to be, in my opinion, of all the personality types, the single most decided. Back when I did my theory on masculinity and femininity between the types and which types tend to be the most masculine or feminine, I voted personally that the ESTJ was the most masculine personality type out of all the types. And I think it's because they tend to come to decisions 
more quickly than most other types and they're going to be very firm on those decisions. It's extremely hard to get an ESTJ to change their mind once they've decided to do something and they also tend to be quite aggressive in their push to make things come to fruition. And statistically, I think this is why they tend to be the type to make the most money alongside the ENTJs, is that they are more willing than other types to kind of push for what they need because they have that extroverted thinking function first and foremost. They're also going to be very organized in general. They're going to be kind of time efficient. They usually like to like schedule things, whereas introverted intuitive types like the ENTJ tend to have an innate sense of time. I find that the types with introverted sensing have more of a kind of clock that they have to actually keep track of if they want to make sure time is being maintained. So I find that the ESTJ in particular tends to need things like a schedule, while you're not going to see the ENTJs enjoy having schedules as much uh, because they have kind of that innate process that handles time, which is not the point of this video. But essentially ESTJs tend to be very organized and like things to be quite scheduled, and they're usually going to be the ones making the schedules for other people as well. Now the ISTJ leads with introverted sensing and because of this, they are not going to have that kind of drive for leadership, drive for authority in particular that the ESTJ typically has. ISTJs are what are usually referred to by me as self-focused and that means that they usually have personal goals, personal interests that they want to achieve and they're going to put all of that kind of same energy that you might see the ESTJ put towards whatever's interesting to them onto their own personal individual goal. And usually that doesn't involve kind of taking control or managing other people. So they kind of have very, very personalized individual goals or things that they want to do that they put all of their energy into. Now, introverted sensing is the function associated with um, past experiences or positive experiences in life or negative experiences in life. So you might find that the ISTJs also tend to be the, one of the types most impacted by things that happen in their life. So events that have impacted them are likely to kind of leave more of a mark on ISTJs than you might find with ESTJs who are very likely to just kind of power through things if it doesn't uh, apply to their goal or apply to the thing that their extroverted thinking wants to do. But either way, both of these types are going to be very dedicated to accomplishing the things that they want to accomplish, the difference is going to be that the ESTJ usually has kind of this wider scope that generally involves interacting with or even managing other people, while the ISTJ kind of has individual goals that involve what they want to do that are generally separate from the expectations or needs of a large group of people. When it comes to the secondary functions for these two types, it's going to be the same as the two that we just discussed, but in reverse order. So the ESTJ is going to have secondary introverted sensing, while the ISTJ is going to have secondary extroverted thinking. So what does this mean for these two types? Well, the ESTJ is usually in this extroverted thinking kind of bulldozing, get it done mindset. And when they go into introverted sensing, you're going to see them stop and reflect. And when they're reflecting, it's usually going to be on their past experiences, what data is known about the thing that they're trying to accomplish, and what have they learned in life related to this thing. Essentially, they're going to reflect back on past experiences to help give them information that's going to move forward their extroverted thinking. And that's an important thing to remember with the secondary function, is that it exists to kind of serve the first one, and generally it's not going to supersede it. And in fact, the first function is kind of like the general of your army, and it's going to be the thing that is most important to you in your psyche. So this secondary function exists to serve the dominant. So the ESTJ will go back into this reflective state, introverted sensing, to find out what they need to find out. They're going to reflect, but then very quickly, they're typically going to go back to extroverted thinking, back into that aggressive kind of bulldozing almost state where they're like, get it done, let's do this. And they're going to be constantly checking back to introverted sensing to make sure that what they're doing aligns with these experiences or the values associated with them. Now the ISTJ on the other hand has secondary extroverted thinking and because of this you're going to find that most of the time they're in that reflective state, they're in that kind of observant state, and then occasionally you'll see them peek out to allow the extroverted thinking to come out and bulldoze or get things done for a while. They're going to take control for very short periods of time and then kind of go back into their shell. What does this look like? Well, I think a great analogy might be looking at a job that is common for ISTJs, which is lawyers. And lawyers have to go over, you know, 100 page documents. They have to analyze all these things, compare and contrast them to what they know about the law and how the law works. And then they have to go to court and like battle 
what they've learned and read and what they've compared and contrasted with these documents that they've gone over. So essentially, it's this contrast of like analyzing things for a long period of time and then using that information in a very kind of extroverted, aggressive almost kind of manner. And that doesn't mean that extroverted thinking is always going to be aggressive. But in general, I do think it is the most aggressive of the function. It's the one that's going to be uh, the most forward with its desires, wants, needs, goals, these sorts of things. And that's why you find that the TJ types tend to be very pushy when it comes to whatever it is that they want to get out of life. So the, the main difference here between these two types and the secondary function is that with the ESTJ, you'll see these weird, or not even weird, but you're going to see them occasionally go inward to reflect on what's important to them and then come back out to go do what they usually do. Whereas with the ISTJ, you're going to see that most of the time they're inward and then it'll look kind of weird because they'll suddenly have this spike of get it done, let's do it, let's do this. And then they'll kind of go back into the reflective shell. So the ESTJ is kind of like an extroverted person who occasionally becomes introverted and it's going to look odd when they do go into their shell for a little bit and then they'll come out and go back to the aggressiveness while for the ISTJ it's the opposite where you'll see them come out of their shell and it'll look odd for a little bit or it might seem out of character and then they'll go back into their introverted scenting shell. So now we're on to the third or tertiary function for each of these types. So the ESTJ is going to have tertiary extroverted intuition, while the ISTJ is going to have tertiary introverted feeling. So what does this mean for the ESTJ? Well, for the ESTJ, it means that surprisingly, they're actually relatively quick-minded and adept at coming up with ideas if they really need to be. The extroverted intuition of the ESJ types can really poke its head out, especially if they're in a mindset that isn't too serious or they're in a more playful kind of just mindset in general. I find that the ESTJs can actually come up with a lot of ideas very quickly on the spot related to things that are important to them in the realm of introverted sensing if they need to. An example of this would be a manager I used to have. I used to work in retail. I had an ESTJ head store manager. And during work meetings, he was very quick to just throw out ideas if he thought they were going to be relevant to what he was trying to accomplish. So we need to meet this sale by this period, something along those lines, and he would just kind of like toss out ideas. Now, it wasn't going to be in the same way that you would see like an ENTP do it, and that's because to the NE dominance, the tossing out of the ideas is kind of the joy that they get in and of itself. Whereas the ESTJ, these ideas are always going to circle back to a practical outcome related to extroverted thinking. So if they throw out an idea via extroverted intuition, it's usually because they're trying to root it back to getting something done. And the ISTJ isn't usually going to share this trait because their extroverted intuition is repressed. And we'll get to that when we get to the repressed functions. But let's go over the tertiary function for the ISTJ, which is introverted feeling. So the ITJ types, both the INTJ and the ISTJ, tend to have a unique relationship with their introverted feeling because it's quite shy and private. And I think that these two types, out of all the types, all 16, the ISTJ and the INTJ, are the least likely to be emotional expressive, uh, emotionally expressive compared to all the personality types. And that's because their introverted feeling is not only tertiary, but it is introverted. So it's kind of in this shy spot where they don't want to talk about it, but it's also not repressed. So it's not this super stressed stress point for them, but it's also introverted. So it's kind of like the skeleton in their closet. And they actually usually have a very deep connection with their introverted feeling morals and values, but it's not going to be something that you see them talk about. I find that ISTJs will live or die by their introverted feeling, but they're not going to flaunt it as being something that is something huge to their identity. It's more so something that like, this is what I believe is right to me and I'm willing to live by this, but also I don't need to show off that I'm willing to live by this. It's kind of just that thing that is in the back for them that they're willing to live and die by essentially. And that's why, I, you know, when I did my fantasy video for the 16 types, I kind of typed the ISTJ as this knight character. And I believe that the archetype of this like defensive knight who has a shield, who's willing to kind of defend what is important to him is something that comes to mind when I think of the introverted sensing and introverted feeling combination that the ISTJ tends to have. That's why ISTJs tend to be extremely protective of their families, for example, or things that are important to them or their communities because they have this combination of introverted sensing and introverted feeling. The drawback to this though is that they're usually not going to be very expressive and much like the INTJ you might even find that they kind of have a very blank uh, face that's hard to read at times whereas the ESTJ tends to be far more expressive when it comes to their communication style compared to the ISTJ.
Now it's time to recover the repressed function or the struggle area for both of these types, which again is going to be kind of flipped of the functions that we just talked about for each of the two types. So the ESTJ is going to have repressed introverted feeling and the ISTJ is going to have repressed extroverted intuition. So what does this look like in the ESTJ? What is repressed introverted feeling? Well, typically it means that they're going to struggle to kind of maintain being a moral, just, or good person while they're in their bulldozing kind of mindset. And they're not going to have a strong idea of who they are or if they are a good person. So the ESTJ can often forget that sometimes like being a decent, moral, or stable person is going to be important to them when it comes to achieving their goals. And you see this a lot with like managers or people who are in higher CEO positions where they kind of just do the things that get the money at the expense of like being a quote unquote good person or just person or living by any kind of moral code related to the thing that they're doing. And it's because extroverted thinking is more interested in the outcome than it is any sort of like personal satisfaction that one might get from achieving that outcome by being a different or better version of yourself. This doesn't mean that all ESTJs are immoral or bad people, but it does mean that they spend less time thinking about these things consciously. And as they develop into older people, it's going to take a lot more effort for them to manage this. They're going to have to learn how to be someone who thinks about their employees when they need to, or give people breaks, or praise people when they deserve praise. And that's something that's going to be a struggle for them is maintaining being a moral or just person while they're in their kind of extroverted thinking, bulldozing mindset. I also find that in the later years in life that ESTJs will also kind of dive into maybe even these artistic expressions that you might find associated with introverted feeling, even like painting, for example, poetry, these sort of things as kind of this outlet. It's just been, it's another antidotal thing, like in the last video where in my coaching, I found that ESTJs and ENTJs will pick up some sort of kind of artistic expression, maybe as kind of like a midlife crisis sort of thing in their 30s or 40s that allows them to express introverted feeling almost in kind of like a safe or protected manner. But that's antidotal. Um, the ISJ, on the other hand, is going to have repressed extroverted intuition. Now, what this usually means is that the ISJ is so concerned with maintaining their present reality and keeping what they have, that they don't often spend a lot of time thinking about what could be, or at the very worst, they tend to be afraid of what could be. One way to think about it is that the ISTJ with introverted sensing and extroverted intuition when thinking about the future, there's like 10 doors ahead of them, but they don't know which door to go through. And they're kind of afraid of what the doors that they're least certain about have within them. So instead of picking a door and trying to move towards that specific one to achieve a certain goal, it's more like they're boarding up the doors that they don't want to go through. So instead of working towards what they do want, they close off the opportunities that they don't want. And then by, you know, the process of elimination, there's only the one or two doors left that are possible outcomes for them. And in general, ISTJs can be neglectful of their own future. I have an ISTJ close friend, and there's almost a running joke between us because every time we meet or we catch up after a while, I'll be like, hey, you know, have you thought about what, you know, you want to do five or 10 years down the road? And he's like, no, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing now. I'm living my life. I'm working the job that I'm working. I don't really have any huge goals or aspirations. And I'm getting by just fine. And for a while, that was really confusing for me to understand because to me, as an INTJ, like where I want to be five or 10 years down the road is almost like what's always on my mind. Whereas for him, it's just something that he never really thought about. He was more happy to just think about where am I now? How am I doing now? How are my family? What's important to me now? And how can I maintain this to kind of continue growing what I already have? And it's almost like they're, they're growing a plant or a flower that is their life and keeping what they already have and fostering that into something better instead of striving for maybe something that they don't have. So the ESTJ is going to struggle with maintaining being a moral person in the long run if they're not careful, while the ISTJ is going to struggle with being aware of the future and they're not always going to have a positive association with the outcomes that might happen in their future. And they're generally going to be kind of blind to the possibilities and they're not always going to want to think about how very small changes in their life could lead to big outcomes because they want to stay within the safe lane usually.